Good morning, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a lovely day so far. Today I decided to talk about adopting a shelter dog or rescue dog. Um, our dog, she's gone now. She was somewhere in the background, Kaiju. Oh, I saw her there. <laughs> um, is a rescue dog. We adopted her in June of 2020 and so it's well it's january now so it's been over six months and i just wanted to share some um tips and things we learned and what to consider before adopting a dog um, okay let's get started um i do apologize if there's any noise i'm in the garden and we live behind a bird like rescue place and there's the chickens and there's also are they peacocks and turkeys you'll hear the gobble 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 and the dogs are also wandering around and yeah it's kind of noisy but it's home um okay so first step is to decide what kind of dog you want to suit your lifestyle so i know hi griffin good boy um some people prefer to um get a dog from a breeder and i 100 percent get that however there are some problems like that may develop if there's too much interbreeding like like cousins and cousins I know we had one of um, Griffin's we had one of his cousins Griffin's a purebred Doberman um, and he's eight so we got him a while ago and the one we had a Doberman before him as well Rusky and she was also a purebred Doberman and another Doberman we had and a Ridgeback and we've only had um, dogs from breeders before and so this is our first shelter dog Kaiju and we wanted to see and we wanted to help another dog because you can help save a life and if we didn't adopt kaiju she probably would have been put down because she was not the most friendly or outgoing dog unlike some so let's get started before i go off track because i can talk about kaiju and the dogs forever um so which dog suits your lifestyle so do you have would you like a big dog would you like a small dog short short haired long haired um, and then the Asian lifestyle. So like we have a big garden, so we like big dogs. Um, they also a scare factor, but they're really big babies. As you can tell by the one sun tanning behind me. And there's our little star of the show. <laughs> um, and so you gotta decide which dog suits your lifestyle and your situation. Um, you can't put a big dog in like an apartment and not walk it. Kaiju already gets bored and we need to exercise her every day. Um, I can dog walk her and stimulate her mentally. So you gotta decide and which dog's best for you. And if you wanna get an older dog or a younger dog, um, like Griffin's, he's eight, whereas Kaiju's one. Um, and then, <laughs> I'm being surrounded by dogs, I love it. Um, she is far more, um, needs to be entertained and kept active whereas he can just lounge around and watch TV with you um, so there's so many dogs available that you can do, um, adopt and yeah depends on which one suits you Hello, bird. Um, also can to consider a puppy has no like past experiences whereas an older dog may have some issues um, like because of past experiences being traumatized by something you got to consider and make sure you know the full history of the dog if you are able to um, else you got to create a bright future for them um, so next um, once you've decided you want to adopt a dog from a shelter instead of a breeder as you would you would choose your breeder and go through um, bird I'm trying to phone it's a lure. Um, you would choose which breeder you would want to go with. Um, you got to choose your rescue shelter. There are so many available, and I know here in South Africa we have SPCAs, and we have the private little um, run dog shelters. Um, but there's also specific ones like specific to huskies, specific to small dogs, big dogs, and then there's ones with cats as well. So if you want to adopt a cat, go for it. Our dogs would eat a cat. Can't get a cat. Um, but yeah, which one suits? um you and which like i don't know past history i know our like spcas have been running since on the day chat i don't know when um but we've had all my grand dogs have been from spcas and our friends and 
yeah, you got you got to decide which one's best for you. Um, so there's many amazing people trying to help animals and save animals' lives, which I I really admire. And I know we donate every every month or so to the SPCA. Um, so maybe consider that next Christmas instead of spending way so like so much on someone, maybe adopt and help save some dogs' lives. Um, so yeah, specific dogs, and they come all come from different circumstances. So some may be surrendered, some may be um, <laughs> some may be like puppies and they were just found in these strays, so different. And then also, there's a bird, we're off to attack the bird. <laughs> As you can see, it's very active, yeah. Um, and then there's Griffin, Camboy. Do you want to come talk? Do you want to come give your reviews? How do you feel about Kaiju? Is he a nice addition to the family? He just wants tummy scratches. Um, so then there's also like SVCAs have different areas and you used to only be able to go to ones in your specific area. Um, I know, I think, I'm not sure, um, but we went to the Randberg one. Um, and then you also, because of COVID, you had to book appointments. Um, I'm not sure if it is now. Oh, you're falling over. Um, what it is like now but you probably just phone and check your head before you go there um, so you won't be disappointed if you're not allowed in to go see them um, so number three is the dog viewings so maybe you have your appointment um, and you might go to multiple shelters if you don't find the correct dog for you so it's sad and you might want to adopt absolutely everything I know my mom started crying when she saw all the dogs um, and you want to help every everyone, but only adopt what you can handle. Um, adopting more than one dog. Some dogs come in pairs, and you can only adopt them together, which I think is really nice because then you, they have a friend and they can trust it. Um, but are they all lonely doggies and they need homes? But um, you can only help improve one life if you can. Um, but that's still better than nothing. Um, and then, yeah, with 2020, wearing masks, I know when we went in, some dogs were scared of the masks because they can't see your face, so most of the time, if we were away from people, we took our masks off, um, just so the dogs can see your face and they don't, like, freak out and think, ah, oh, there's a stranger and there's a strange thing looking at me. Um, and of course, there are shy dogs, aggressive dogs, scared dogs, um, they're in the kennels, like, I know in the SPCA, they have beautiful, um, oh, beautiful amazing like people do donate and then they have their own like kennels for the dogs um it's like a shelter they're kind of outside but they've got an inside part and like i know we donated our old beds before so if you can't adopt one maybe adopt old stuff um and they also have a charity shop which you can donate to um so you can always help dogs even if you are only donating something and so you go in and you you're allowed to walk down the aisles um i think they were a b c d e sorry um so like five rows of um like 10 so about 50 dogs i want to say but then some of them had two some of them had one some of them were empty um like the space for 50 dogs um and you walk down and you like get to see the dogs some of them are big some of them are small like depends on what you want really um and yeah, so some are very aggressive and some are very scared, so they're gonna bark at you. Like, and then you get these massive burbles like barking at you, and you, it, it's it's kind of scary. But they're just scared and they they're lonely, and you just gotta consider that while before you go in. Um, so some of them have been surrendered, some of them have been abandoned, um, and some of them are just puppies who were like picked up on the side of the road. Um, so kaiju. I don't know where she is at the moment. Um, she was found in Honeydew and she was found on the side of the road as a stray. So that's the most amount of history we got. So you gotta just prepare for anything really. Um, and if they're aggressive or whatever, they always have emotions too and they're just scared and lonely. So you just gotta be prepared for that when you go to choose. Um, so picking dogs, which ones you're interested in. So I know at the SVCA you go, so you go and look down all the aisles and you see the dogs and see how they're behaving, if they're barking at you, if they're cowering in a corner, depends on their personalities really, um, and how they're gonna act. 
but then so you pick a few so we had like four on our list and so you say okay no c1 b1 b4 b5 b9 um and so you go into the office and you tell them like which dogs you are interested in you just came out of a bush <laughs> um, and then they tell you they have their files and they tell you like where they were found or if they were surrendered abandoned um, and then any kind of history they have um, so like this one dog had an injury that we were interested in um, and like why why was it injured like it was hit by a car for instance so you gotta look at it um, so like Kaju her story was she felt spun in honeydew she's a stray um, they think they thought she was like two but um then we went to our vet and then they said based on her teeth she was not even one so she's still a puppy i hope this wooden noise isn't too bad um but yeah then you see um and then you put your name down for specific dogs and so for us um all the dogs that we were interested in had like three names per dog so people three different people were ahead of us in the line um to adopt them so we saw Kaiju in a, in a kennel, um, if you look at her, I'll put a picture up of, of her now, a good detailed photo. I got hiccup side. Um, her face is like a Sharpe and then her body is a Waymarana. So my mum just saw her face and she said she looked like a Waymarana and um, Waymarana, Sharpe. Kaiju. Um, we also think she's got something else in her because she's a complete mix. Um, but that's also quite fun because then their genetics are different and they're not as interbred and it's that diverse, they're the strongest. Um, so she was like sh cowering in a corner of the, t of the kennel and the only reason my mom wanted to see her was because she wagged her tail at us. Whereas like the rest of the dogs were at, at the fences like talking to us, being so friendly. But that one little wag of the tail caught my mom's interest. Um, and then we found out her information and so yeah there you go Kaiju before was super thin and she was um because she was found on the street so she's a stray she's very thin very under malnourished she was also pregnant so she was just skin and bones um and they had to deal with the puppies and stuff um so meeting your dog depends on the dog probably but i know we had to, we went back four times because she had to be um spayed and everything first spayed neutered um, everything first before we could take her home so we showed we were interested so then they did that um, they muted her sprayed her I can't remember which one's which now there's a helicopter no one wants me to film today <sighs> wait for the helicopter can I continue now? So then we went back four times, um, three times to see Kaju with the dog psychologist that they also have there, which she volunteers there so she doesn't get paid, but then she helps you and check the compatibility between you and your dog and then, so everything was good, she was so happy which is out of her kennels and she already learned to sit and she was so happy to talk to us and um, just make friends with us. Um, so we had four meetings and then on the fourth one we took Griffin, there's our dog there, um, who they also want to check the compatibility between the dogs um so we went i can't remember oh no we went twice with him so five times forgive me we went five times so the last two were with griffin um and so we we had to we walked them up and down to check if they were fine they weren't showing any aggression he was just super excited um and i don't know if you know dobermans but they're big and they're like they're just so excited and noisy dogs but yeah he was super happy to meet her um so then if you've accepted your dog they accept you um the combat the compatibility between you and your dogs and then they also come and they do a house check the spca um to make sure that your fences are high enough that you don't have any dangerous things Kaiju, come out the bush here comes our star um and then yeah they check Everything's fine. Hello. Oh, so I'm going to lie in the shade. I'm hot. Hot dog. Sure. Um, and then, 
so then everything's that and then you get to go fetch your dog so before you're allowed to take them home you have to pay so it's 850 bucks for the SPCA for the dog um I'm not sure about cats <laughs> she's watching a bug <laughs> I keep getting distracted sorry um so this is the sixth step um so then they have spayed and or neutered your dog um and then they get they give them vaccinations and then they microchip them before they leave um, to activate this would normally be over like 3,000 Rand so 850 for everything included like everything is an insane amount our previous dogs have been like a few grand just to adopt them that's before vet, vet bills and vaccinations and microchipping so it, it really is a charity and they're super amazing people who who do this and the vets like volunteer there and stuff um, so now the seventh you take your dog home so I know we picked it up in our car and then we came home. Um, so you mustn't overwhelm them. I know she was like super stressed. She doesn't like didn't like cars very much. She never been in one. Um, besides the SBCA truck, who took her there? Um, and then and then you got to introduce the outside of your house then the inside of your house. That's what was recommended for us. So we walked her along our road before we brought her into the property. Um, with Griffin just to make sure they were adjusting and it was in a neutral space um, and then we walked around our garden and then we walked around our house so this is all on the lead Paige had never been on a lead before <laughs> this is the journey never been on a lead before so it was an interesting experience for her um, but yeah walk around and then brought it inside and like showed her everything before she was allowed off the lead there's just like this like shows them their space and then they they're more comfortable I think with everything so we walked around for about an hour and a half hour I don't even know how long it was it was super hot walked around on the lead to get them comfortable both of them like next to each other walking up and down and up and down and up and down and then you let them off their lead and um, they've met before so hopefully they'll get on at these hours did they were just very excited to see each other and she just wanted to explore everything um, so then the psychologist also um, told us, I'll link a website here, um, it's called the 333 rule. Um, so it's the three days, three days, three weeks, three months. Um, so the, the three days is for them to figure out the place and to like explore and it's a complete adventure because they've never, well she never had a stable home before this so she was just used to exploring and just like fending for herself. Um, and then in three weeks they get more comfortable they realize they might get to stay here and they like start adjusting and like getting into the routine of things like, oh i actually get a bowl of food every day or twice a day depends on how often you feed your dogs um and oh i actually like this place all oh, these people are nice oh i've got this other dog here he's a friend of mine <laughs> and then three months is settling into the routine so everything um like kaiju never had a bed before so you got to create a routine of like getting them into bed every night um she's never had a bed so she's like whoosh, like putting her paws around she didn't know what this fluffy thing was in her bed um and then that they get food that they have to go outside and do their business um she, we don't know how, but she was miraculously potty trained already. So maybe she was someone's dog. Um, they were, she was near a settlement in Honeydew, so maybe she was someone's dog and they trained her a little bit. Um, we don't actually know, but she was not even one. So not 100% sure. Um, and yeah, you only start training them after they settled. And I know we only took her out. We took her to the vet to get checked. Um, after two weeks of being here, um, so she was really adjusted and she was comfortable um, And she went on some car rides just down the road and back just to make sure she was okay with the car Hello Griffles um, So you learn about your dog over time, their habits, their actions The first day Kaiju was here, she ended up on the dining room table She climbed the table because she wanted to see and she wanted to explore things So she did that, um, she hasn't done it since luckily But she like, likes to jump on the couches sometimes, which we don't want her to um because she'll scratch them um and you learn about their true personality um and what they were actually their actions and what they want to do and how they act they've got their own personalities as well and then they are rescue dogs you got to remember that so there's new things so they might have been scared or hurt before so like kaiju is scared of belts um and she's also she's scared of our helper um 
so she might have been beat by a belt or her before or chased um, when she was a puppy because you don't know their past experiences and their history. Kaiju! Can I finish? Please, can I finish? Um, I have to talk quickly now. Um, and then there's so many new things. Like, Kaiju never had a bed. She didn't know what a washing machine was. She, like, was watching it move. And we discover new things every day that she's never seen before. Um, the oven or the radio when things make noises. Um, just random noises, like, in a normal house that she would never expect. You would never expect a dog to be surprised by, but she is. Um, so... You just gotta accept the dog and as long as they're <laughs> just rolling around as long as there's nothing really wrong with your relationship you just gotta show love and be consistent in your actions and the way you train them the way you love them and your routine and then they normally they just adjust and i know kaiju's become a very big part of our family she's got such a personality griffin loves her we love her she loves my dad oh my goodness and like she's adjusted to like going and chasing the wild bunnies in our garden and going after the birds with griffin being best buds with griffin she's got to follow him playing whereas in before in the beginning she never played with him because she was scared of him um, but now they're best of friends and I don't know you just it's a really wonderful act to do to adopt a dog and to help a life Kaiju probably would have been put down <laughs> if we hadn't adopted her just because she wasn't that friendly um, in the kennels um, and people wouldn't have wanted to pay for her um, but we're really glad we did I know my whole family love her to bits and she's such a character she's so she makes so much spice my goodness she's so cheeky come here oh she just wants to walk past <laughs> she doesn't she wants to go play with griffin um but yeah that is all i have today thank you for listening to my tips tricks and information about um mostly the spca but i know other family members have adopted dogs from other rescue places and it's a kind of a similar process but maybe just phone ahead and check on them um but thank you so much for watching i hope you learned something today um and you like our dogs and our little kaiju story um she will continue to be in future videos and we go on lots of doggy walks and we love it we love life and thank you so much for watching have a great day